Hey everybody, this is Iron Will Becker and I'm back with another book review. Um, I'm going to do this very, very long book in a short review because the only way to really do it justice is to actually, um, to actually read the book uh, yourself. And I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, this book is, is part novel. This book is part philosophy, and it's a book that personally helped me kind of um, put together some of the, uh, crystallize some of my ideas and my understanding of, um, as the book calls them, the producers, the people that make things, that create things. Whether it's art or whether it's um, uh, buildings or railroads or, or those kind of things, it's the book that helped me tremendously in understanding some concepts and why certain things are good and certain things are bad. Uh, Unrand does a great job in Atlas Shrugged in really laying out um, why why a good free market allows the creators, the owners of businesses, the producers, the freedom to create and build and own the things that they. They build. Now, the this no, this novel uh, centers around two characters. Um, if you're not familiar with Atlas Shrugged, and you've heard the phrase "Who is John Galt?" Um, let me just tell you, there's a really good reason why she does it that way, um, and kind of makes this John Galt guy kind of a mythological creature in the beginning. Um, and uh, the other is a young lady named Dagny Taggart. And while there is um, a little bit of, uh, say, intimacy between adults in this, um, the, the, real, the real crux, the real beauty of it is that... Um, Dagny can see that the world around her is is changing and that there is a group of people that are negatively impacting the economy. And she doesn't really know or understand what's going on. And then there's this guy who, he, that question, who is John Galt, is kind of like a throwaway phrase, just a... You know, like, whatever. Um, I'm, I couldn't think of an equivalency right there. But let me just tell you that... Um, the story and the philosophy are so well put together to help an individual understand why owners need to own their stuff. Um, so what happens is, is we get some backstory through kind of some second and third hand stories about who this John Galt character was. Uh, he was a, uh, an engineer at a car company and the owners of the company decided that they needed to make the wages fair for everyone. And everyone got paid the same and everyone, um, basically the car company became a, a, a communist society or as we call them, a commune. Um, and John got up and said that I will make this stop. You will destroy yourselves and I will make this, I will bring the productive powers of this country to a halt. And so what happens is, is the, the, the comp, the, the car company does this. And within just a couple years, um, it goes out of business. By this point, uh, John has moved on. 
as we learn in the story. And he, uh, he goes about this secret mission. And it really is a secret because we don't know what's going on. But some people start behaving strangely. And once great magnets of the era disappear, completely gone. Um, some of them destroy their factories. One guy sets his oil wells on fire, like crazy, like crazy stuff. Um, and uh, another guy creates an amazing metal called reared in steel, which is um, super light, super strong um, metal that can withstand hot and cold and and uh, all sorts of abuses. Um, and what what happens is, that when the producers, the makers, start disappearing, certain things start falling apart in the economy. Um, first of all, there's a, a company that sues a banker because he won't lend them money. Well, the day that he's supposed to, the court says, no, you have to do this, he disappears. The day before he's supposed to loan this money. Um, and then uh, a guy who owns huge amounts of, of copper mines throughout the world um, starts behaving erra er erratically, erratically, whatever that word is, um, abnormally. We'll use it. We can throw that in there. And um, he, he's seen doing strange, extravagant things that were not really in his nature. Um, you could say that he, uh, he becomes a playboy. Um, and still more business tycoons disappear. And Dagny goes on a mission to keep them from disappearing. And she can't get to the magnets, to the business owners fast enough um, it is it is a an amazing novel um, it is long compared to your standard business book which ranges about uh, eight to ten hours around 200 to, to 300 or 400 pages but but let me just tell you that um, Dagny learns and comes to understand that the power to produce and create and to own what you make is one of the greatest freedoms that people in America have. In fact, it's, it's, not, only, it's not only an American concept, but it's actually a gift from the Almighty God to be owners of what you create. Uh, in, in Hebrew or in Jewish, uh, no, Hebrew, in Hebrew law and in um, Anglo-Saxon law, um, you, you were allowed to own what you created. And that was, as the Bible says, by the sword of the, thy brow thou shalt eat thy bread. And what that means is you own it. It's yours. You create it, you own it, you have control over it. And in this nation, in the United States of America, for for nearly 200 years, maybe a little more, maybe a little more, if you made something, you owned it, it was yours. But the, the copyright laws, the trademark laws, only protected you for like 14 or 15 years. And then your competitors had the opportunity to then take up your work and improve it and make it better. And that really caused us as a society to really push and create and build. And, and I got to tell you guys that, um, that that fires me up. That gets me excited 
that we can own what we make. That it should be ours by right. By the sweat of our brow. And, and Dagny learns that this brilliant engineer has actually been right under her nose. And, and John Galt has been using the railroad, which she is an owner of, her family railroad, um, to get around and to get these entrepreneurs, these owners and producers to leave society. In fact, um, one of the scary things that happens in the book is... Oh, what do they call them? I think they call them dead trains. And what happens is... Is the engineers abandon the train in the middle of nowhere. They, they pull the train. They stop the train on the tracks. And they leave it there. They go. Because they're, they're getting lured away by... By other interests... Sometimes it's self-preservation. Sometimes they're a brilliant uh, engineer in the aspects of, of rail, but they're also like an engineer as in they can build and create things. So they get pulled away. Um, and, and Dagny finds this machine that John was working on that produces tremendous amounts of energy massive amounts of energy and it would have made the car company so filthy rich disgustingly rich and uh john john galt has perfected this and and made this amazing machine work um and has done some just extraordinary things with it um and, and i just want you to understand that that we are seeing the same kind of societal de societal decay today that Ayn Rand writes about in this book. Now we're not seeing the producers disappearing and and, and going away, but we are seeing the takers taking more and more and going after more and more of the nation's wealth that's not theirs. That they, they legitimately have no right to because they haven't they haven't earned anything. And I, I love the I love how she creates this world, this version of the United States of America, um, in the in the era of the the locomotive, the diesel, or uh, whatever it was that came out. I don't, I don't honestly, I don't remember because it's not steam. It's not steam engines. They're using some kind of diesel locomotive. So, I guess that must have been the fifties and sixties in our time. Um, and just the amazing story that she tells. Um, about the importance of owning the things that you make to, to having creative control over what comes out of your mind, what you produce by the sweat of your brow, by your, this, by your thinking and your creativity. Um, it's such a good book, guys. The, the movies, the movies do not do it any justice. Um, they really, really don't. Um, and the oh, the book is so phenomenal, so so phenomenal. And it really helped me crystallize the importance of being an owner, being a creator of my own thing, owning it. Being able to direct my own life. For you to be able to direct your own life. And have control over it. Control outside of a job. 
Excuse me. Mm, guys. It is a book that has shaped my life um, and really got me looking outside of the regular nine to five um, and helped me see that, that there's a reason to be a maker, a creator, a producer, as the book calls them. Oh, oh Henry Reardon's family is a perfect foil to him in the book. Um, he's got a whiny brother who, who doesn't do anything and lives off uh, Hank, Hank, Henry, Hank. They call him Hank. Of Hank's wealth. He's got a wife who loves to throw extravagant parties and doesn't care about what he does or that that's how they make money and live. Um, oh, man. You guys, if you haven't read Atlas Shrugged, um, get get it on Audible, get get it on Kindle, on 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 Nook or whatever the whatever platform you read on. Get a hard copy for that matter, if you or not necessarily a hard cover, but you know, get a, a paperback of some kind of it. Read it. I've read it several times, and I don't tell that to you to brag, but to help get the concepts in your mind. I mean, I mean that's why you reread a book. Because you're not the same person you were the first time you read it. Or the second, or the third, or the fourth. And I, I gotta tell you that when I when I first heard this statement, the same person never reads the same book twice, I was like, What? And I realized I didn't get it. And I didn't get it. Until I got around a culture of people who epitomize personal and professional development and growth. Oh my goodness, guys. I, I can't even tell you how huge a difference it made. And how much I love being able to learn from people that have amazing results in their lives. That have excuse me, created and own the things that they make. Um, oh my goodness. Okay, so Atlas Shrugged. It's a phenomenal book. Um, a book that she wrote before that, which is really good too, is The Fountainhead. Um, and uh, yeah, but 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 it, so if you've read The Fountainhead, um, already, then it just sets you up for Atlas Shrugged. Uh, I'm glad that I didn't read The Fountainhead beforehand, um, but they're both, they're both phenomenal books, okay? So guys, thank you for joining me, uh, tonight on this book review. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please like and share it. And if you're looking for someone to help you level up your leadership skills, that's what I do at Turning Leaf Solutions, okay? That's what I do. I help people level up their personal leadership and their professional leadership. Guys, gals, I could tell you the kind of difference it makes in my life, and I'll be happy to share that with you one-on-one. -on -one. If you go to Turning Leafs, that's L-E-A-F-S dot com, you can catch other videos I've done, book reviews, uh, quotes I've talked about. Uh, there's some other content on there too from, from other people um, that has, has been inspiring and encouraging. And on there, there's a little bio about myself. But the most important thing is there is a Calendly link on there, right on the, right on the main page, where you can book a meeting with me for 30 minutes. And to see if I would be a good fit to work with you, to coach you and help you in your life. I may not be, but it's a free call, um, a free Zoom we could set up. You could get on there and set up and uh, we can get together and see what I can do to help you. If you want a book recommendation, message me, um, whatever platform you're seeing this on, you should be able to message me. 
and you know, we'll set up a Zoom and I can give you a personal recommendation after we have a conversation. Otherwise, you can go to turningleafs.com forward slash book dash list. And uh, it should be, uh, I can't, I won't say that. I was gonna say, it, it's in some of the bios on my social media platforms. Um, and it it is usually put on um, a bunch of the posts as, as down below the video. Um, so that way you guys can hit it. Uh, Guys, guys, reading is so important. So, so important. I can't stress it enough, but I'm a book nerd. I love to read. So, guys, I hope you guys are going to have a great weekend. I am super pumped. Uh, I've got a leadership event this weekend. Um, I'm going uh, up to Harrisburg to uh, listen to uh, probably about a half dozen millionaires teach and um, provide some leadership training and some education. And I'm so pumped about it. My business partner and I are going up there together. So uh, guys, again, if you do like this video, please like and share it. Uh, I recommend people to the channel. Uh, I'd love to help someone to find a new book to read, to learn and grow, um, because that's, that's what I love to do. So, all right, guys, take care. Thanks again for joining me, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.